Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and in this video lecture we are going to talk about vaccination types. We are going to talk about different types of vaccines and their use, their characteristics and also we will be seeing uh, what are the drawbacks of utilizing different types of vaccines including the live uh, attenuated vaccines, live vaccines, subunit vaccines and all. So let's begin to talk about it. So the first things first is uh, the overall classification of vaccines. I believe all you know and familiar with the idea of vaccination. And in simple terms, if I say what is vaccine, we can say that it's a suspension of microorganisms that includes antibody production to protect against disease and induces immunity. So in a very basic terms, what we can say is that vaccine is going to induce our immunity. It's going to in like it's going to improve our immunity because these are nothing but microorganisms. So those microorganisms that can cause infection in us that can uh, result in diseases in us. So what we are doing is we are ingesting those uh, little dosage of those microorganisms, inactivated form of those microorganisms into our bloodstream so that our body's immune system is going to become familiar with them and it's going to be influenced by them to produce proper antibody uh, against them. And once our body produces antibody, which is a very specific fighting agent against those antigen or those pathogens, then in future if that same kind of uh, bacteria or microorganism infect us then in our body those antibodies are already being prepared so our body is already ready to fight against them so we are not going to feel uh, like feel sick about that same microorganism infection again in future so that's the overall story of vaccines and vaccination so but but how and what kind of microorganisms that we can choose for vaccination that's always a big question we now have almost five six different types of vaccination strategies not all of them are going to work uh, the same way they are working in a different way they have a different principle and not all of them working for the same disease for different disease and infection we have different types of vaccines working better than the other so let's talk about uh, all these types we can divide these vaccines into two different type one is uh, the complete agent we can take the whole microorganism as a vaccine i'm just calling it as an agent so whole agent as a vaccine or we can take just a subunit or fragment of that microorganism as a vaccine so uh, with this idea we have a whole agent vaccine as well as a subunit vaccine let me take a color whole agent and subunit now this whole agent back vaccine can be further divided uh, into two different type either inactivated or attenuated now there is a difference between this term inactivated and attenuated inactivated means killed that means we just kill that microorganism totally okay we kill it uh, on the other hand attenuated one is weakened that means we are not killing that microorganism but we are uh, we are cutting some portions of its pathogenic activity. We are reducing some portions of its pathogenic activity. Now generally, uh, microorganisms are killed using formalin solution. We treat them with formalin and, and present no risk of getting the disease at all because we totally kill that with formalin treatment. Uh, and, and an example of vaccine that is killed is rabies vaccine. We all take this rabies vaccine always. So it's a killed vaccine. So there's no risk of that pathogen to be present uh, in our body again. While attenuated vaccine is when uh, we can use DNA mutations uh, accumulated for a long term cell culture. So what we do we continue to change the DNA, modify the DNA with chemical mutagens is going to change it. And we check that for several rounds and several generations of cell culture. But again, there's a big question mark is always there because it's not totally killed. That microorganism can uh, reverse to a living pathogen and that can cause uh, some infection in our body. That's always a possibility for attenuated type of vaccines. While in inactivated vaccine, that's not a, not a thing. Okay. So attenuated vaccines, example, MMR, mumps, measles, rubella vaccine. Uh, in attenuated vaccine, no booster shot is required. Okay. Uh, booster shot means, you know, sometimes when we use very tiny amount of vaccination, like very small amount of microorganisms in small dose, we need to take multiple dose in, in interval, in regular interval. That's known as booster dose, which we don't need for attenuated vaccine. 
okay now uh, what about the subunit vaccine subunit vaccine as per the name as we know it's only we take the part of that microorganism and the part of the microorganism we use adjuvant that increase the effectiveness of the vaccine adjuvant means large particles that can be tagged uh, adjuvant means this is not a part of the pathogen we can take large detergent molecules or you know dead non-pathogenic bacteria this can be adjuvants because you know for generating immune response in our body our body needs to uh, show a kind of very large molecule that's why the antigens that that needs to work they are bigger in size very small molecules are not going to trigger our immune response much so that's why we need to add these adjuvants for we can take uh, other inert proteins or we can take uh, portions of dead pathogen or we can take uh, detergents uh, as the adjuvant to induce uh, the effectiveness of this of this subunit vaccine and the subunit vaccine is safer than attenuated vaccine uh, no risk of getting the disease because you know in attenuated vaccine there is a fair chance of reversal of the disease which is not present in subunit vaccine but again subunit vaccine sometimes need repeated doses okay example of subunit vaccine is hepatitis b vaccine okay so these are uh, the differences we can define the vaccines in different terms we can also classify vaccines in many other way but this is the easiest way that we can classify vaccines now based on this classification let me share few examples of vaccines with you and we continue with the live attenuated vaccines or lab example tuberculosis that is bcg vaccine oral polio vaccine opv which is very common in india especially measles rotavirus yellow fever vaccine all these vaccines are live attenuated vaccine inactivated vaccines which are killed antigen killed microorganisms that we use whole cell pertussis vaccine and inactivated polio virus ipv vaccine on the other hand subunit vaccine which is simply known as a purified antigen that means we take the whole organism we uh, fragmentize it we take only few portions few subunits purify purify it and we use it as cellular pertussis vaccine hemophilus influenza type b hemophilus influenza uh, type b or hib vaccine and uh, pneumococcal vaccine there are example like pcv7 pcv10 and pcv13 as well as hepatitis b vaccines can be used the hep b that's the part of the coat uh, that can also be used as a purified antigen subunit vaccines so you can see for hepatitis we have both live attenuated vaccine uh, i mean sorry yes as well as we have this uh, uh, this kind of subunit vaccines here and toxoid vaccines toxoid vaccines are where the toxins that are generally secreted by microorganisms we take those toxins and we exclude uh, the toxicity part we call it inactivated toxins or toxoids and we do the same uh, for toxoids that we do for inactivated uh, vaccines that we treat that toxins with uh, with formaldehyde and with high temperature and that's going to convert that toxins into toxoid and we use tetanus toxin diphtheria toxin and we convert that tetanus and diphtheria toxin to toxoid and we can use that for that particular disease tetanus and diphtheria so you know generally tetanus toxins and toxoids are very common we generally take tetanus shot we need it's not going to induce our immunity for a lifelong time we just need to take that it's going to valid for only 2021 20, there's even one month two months uh, duration only because it's only toxins not the whole body it's not even the subunits it's the toxins that is produced by uh, by the microorganism and generally these toxoids are produced from uh, exotoxins exotoxins secreted by uh, gram positive as well as gram negative bacteria so that's what we convert into toxoids and we can treat it we can use it okay now the final thing uh, regarding all these toxins uh, and also let me tell you uh, the drawback of utilizing every single toxins with example for a summary you go with live attenuated vaccines a uh, weakened version of living microbe that can't cause disease but uh, the chance the challenge is that there is a chance of mutation there is a chance of reversal the example measles mumps rubella polio uh, which is known as sabin vaccine yellow fever all live attenuated vaccines second type inactivated or killed vaccines microbes killed with uh, chemicals heat or radiation challenges uh, although inactivated vaccines are safest but uh, weaker immune response and they need uh, boosters they need a repeated interval of doses example of this kind is cholera vaccine flu hepatitis a japanese encephalitis plague polio and rabies vaccines 
third type subunit type of vaccines includes antigens uh, that best st stimulate our immune system sometimes you also need to use adjuvants to induce so challenges are that identifying a specific antigen from a whole microorganism takes time and takes a research so development of these vaccines are expensive and time consuming and examples hepatitis b pertussis pneumonia caused by streptococcus pneumonia okay and uh, toxoid toxoid again formerly inactivated toxins used as vaccines used when main cause of illness is a bacterial toxin so examples like tetanus or botulism generally caused by only toxins adverse effect it's not going to be caused by the bacterial presence itself if the bacteria releases toxin then only the disease happen that's why in those diseases only we use toxoids otherwise we cannot use that's why the example diphtheria and tetanus conjugate a vaccine conjugate is specialized subunit vaccine uh, where antigens are linked to polysaccharides as i said like you know antigens sometimes need to be linked with larger protein fragments and polysaccharides uh, these are most effective for immature immune system or for infants in this case the immune system is not well developed and if you provide the antigen directly their body is not going to generate a immune response based on that small antigen only so in this case they are going to need this this conjugate they, they need this polysaccharides along with the vaccines okay so that's why we use this conjugates to to use it examples influenza type b pneumonia caused by pneumonia okay dna vaccine we also use the dna uh, fragment as a vaccine dna of important antigens introduced to cell but uh, its its role its proper use its challenge it's still not known because it's in the experimental phase people try to use influenza and herpes as well as hiv uh, vaccines production with the help of this dna modification and generally they they are linked with the dna mutagenesis uh, to 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 induce this uh, antigenic i mean immuno immunogenic feature in our body then final is recombinant vector attenuated virus or bacterium used to introduce microbial dna to cell it's just like you know uh, rdt recombinant dna technology based vaccines again we are again it's kind of related to the dna vaccine so that's why both are experimental level and both uh, researchers are working for hiv rabies and uh, influenza more because what we are trying to figure out here is that uh, if we are using recombinant uh, dna plasmids that means you know if you find out uh, the the gene products that can induce that immune response in our body and if we just insert that gene product in in a vector and transfer the vector inside uh inside the cell then the cell is going to have this response that's what we can do about this recombinant vector as well as this dna vaccines drawback of different types of vaccines uh so that's that's uh, kind of the end because we already talked about the drawbacks of the vaccine don't need to discuss about that uh, either we already talked about it so that's regarding the different types of the vaccines uh how they are used why they are used and and all the examples that are very much famous for each of the vaccine types so if you like this video on vaccination and types of vaccines please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe subscribe to this channel click that subscribe button and also click on that notification bell so that you get a response from youtube whenever i upload a new video and stay tuned to get more interesting video like this thank you